My name is Mark Thompson. I am artistic director here at Florida Southern College and also the opera theater director. I want to welcome you, welcome you here to Branscombe Auditorium for tonight's performance of Gilbert and Sullivan's Patience or Bunthorne's Bride. Now, I know, it's kind of funny, isn't it? Uh, before we get going, I want to make you aware that there are other people involved in this production that will not be appearing on the stage. They are the auditorium director and house manager, Crystal Norman, the technical director and lighting designer, Jeffrey Bowe, the sound engineer, Barbara Harden from Vista Audio Productions, a video technician and camera operator, McKinley Miller, and the curtain operator, Evan West, and last but not least, on the third titles that you will see projected above me here is Josh Rakes. You will see the text from all of the songs there. So that's what's happening with all of that. And now this is the time when I ask you to please silence your cell phones, refrain from taking any flash pictures, even if your favorite person is up on stage, and sit back, relax, and enjoy Gilbert and Sullivan's Patience. <laughs>
back in this love of ours, rivals as we all are in the affections for our Reginald. The very hopelessness of our love is a bond that binds us to one another. Jealousy is merged in misery, while he, the very cenosure of our eyes and hearts, remains icy and sensible. What have we to strive for? The love of maidens is, to him, as interesting as the taxes. But he pays his taxes and cherishes the receipts. Happy receipts? Fools! I beg your pardon. Fools and blind to the man who loves, wildly loves. But who? None of us. No, none of us. His weird fancy has lighted for the nonce on patience, the village milkmaid. On patience? Oh, he cannot be serious. Uh, but yesterday, I caught him in her dairy eating fresh butter with a tablespoon. Oh, but patience is boasts that she has never loved. That loved her is a sealed book. Tis but a fleeting fancy. Twill quickly wear away. Oh, Reginald. If you but knew what a wealth of golden love was waiting for you, stored up in this rugged old bosom of mine, the milkmaid's triumph would be short indeed. <laughs> of delirium, an acute accentuation of supremest ecstasy, which the earthly might easily mistake for indigestion. But it is not indigestion. It is aesthetic transfiguration. Ah, enough of babble. Come, maidens. Oh, but say, I have some news for you. The 35th Dragoon Guards have halted in the village, and even now some are on their way to this very spot. <laughs> Dragoon guards? They are fleshly men of full habit. We care nothing for dragoon guards. But bless me, you were all engaged to them.
them a year ago. A year ago? <laughs> My poor child, you don't understand these things. A year ago, they were very well in our eyes. But since then, our tastes have been etherealized. Our perceptions exalted. Come, it is time to lift up our voices and morning carol to our Reginald. Let us to his door. Many lovesick maidens we From Aragon, for some Mephisto pronouncing a ban. A smack of Lord Waterford, reckless and rollicky, swagger of Roderick, heading his clan. The keen penetration of Paddington, Pollocky, grace of an orderless, Connor Divan. The genius strategic of Caesar or Hannibal, skill of Sir Garnet, and thrashing a cannibal. Thing in a hammer, a stranger, a touch of him. Little of Manfred, but not very much of him. Beetle of Burlington, Richardson, show. Mr. Macabre and Madame Tussauds. Yes, yes, yes. scene of our former triumphs, but where's the Duke? Oh, here I am. Come, cheer up, don't give way. Well, for that, I'm as cheerful as a poor devil can be expected to be, because the misfortune of being a Duke, a thousand a day. Well, most men would envy you. Envy me? Well, tell me, Major, are you fond of toffee? Very. We are all fond of toffee. We, we are. are! Yes, but to live on toffee. Toffee for breakfast. Toffee for dinner, toffee for tea. Have it supposed that you live on nothing but toffee, and that if you were offered anything else, that you would have been insulted. How would you like that? Now I can quite see that under those circumstances, even toffee would become monotonous. In place of toffee, read flattery, adulation, and abject deference. Carried to such a pitch that I began to think at last man was bent at 45 degrees. Great heavens, what is it adulating me? You're as commonplace a young man as ever I saw. You, you are. are! That's it? That's it exactly that describes me to a T. Thank you all very much. Well, I couldn't take it any longer, which is why I joined the second class cavalry regiment. Yeah, yeah, why? Oh. In the army, thought I, I shall be occasionally snubbed, perhaps even bullied, who knows? The thought was rapture, and here I am. <laughs> yes, and 
here are the ladies. But who is the gentleman with the long hair? I don't know. He seems popular. He does seem popular. Angela, what is the meaning of this? Oh, sir, leave us. Our minds are but ill-tuned to light love talk. What, what in the world has come over you all? Unborn. He has come over us. He has come among us, and he has idealized us. Has he succeeded in idealizing you? He has. Good old Bunthorn. My eyes are open. I droop despairingly. I am soulfully intense. I am limp, and I cling. <laughs> finished. At last, finished. Oh. Are you better now? Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, I am better now. The poem is finished and my soul has gone out into it. Uh, there was nothing worth mentioning. It happens at least three times a day. Oh, patience, dear patience. Sir, will it please you read it to us? This is supplicating. Shall I? No. no. Well, I'll read it if you bid me. Uh, you can if you like. It is a wild, weird, fleshly thing, yet very tender, very yearning, very precious. I call it, oh, hollow, hollow, hollow. <sighs> is it a hunting song? Oh, a hunting <laughs> song? No, it is not a hunting song. It's the wail of a poet's heart when he discovers everything is commonplace. Oh. To understand it, cling passionately to one another, and think of faint lilies. Oh, hollow, hollow, hollow. What time the poet hath hymned, the writhing maid lies limbed, quivering on amaranthine asphodel. How can he paint her woes, knowing as well he knows that all can be set right with calomel? Oh, yes. <laughs> when from the poet's plinth, the amorous colocynth yearns for the aloe, faint with rapturous thrills, how can he hymn their throes, knowing as well he knows that they are only uncomfortable? Pounded pills. Oh. Is it and can it be nature hath this decree? Nothing poetic in this world shall dwell, or that in all her works something poetic lurks, even in colocynth or calomel, I cannot tell. Oh. <laughs> How pale, fragrant! How earnestly precious! Uh, it seems to me to be nonsense. <laughs> nonsense, yes, perhaps. But oh, what precious nonsense. This is all very well, but you seem to forget that you are engaged to us. <laughs> it cannot be. You are not in period. You are not delocution. You are not even early English. Oh, be early English. And it is too late. Oh, red and yellow. Primary colors. <laughs> South Kensington. Mm -hmm. We didn't design our uniforms, but, but we don't see how they could be improved. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> Still, there is a cobwebby gray velvet with a tender bloom like cold gravy, which made Florentine 14th century and trimmed with Venetian leather and Spanish altar lace and surmounted with something Japanese, it matters not what would at least be early English. Mm -hmm. Come, maidens. <laughs> Many lovesick maidens we, lovesick all against our will. Many years and so we shall be. Grace to the British uniform, a uniform that has served us in the courts of Venus and on the fields of Mars. Let us regroup! March, 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 march. Am I alone and unobserved? I am. Then let me own, I'm an aesthetic sham. <laughs> the 
this air severe is but a mere veneer. This cynic smile is but a wile of guile. This costume chaste is but good taste misplaced. Let me confess, a languid love for lilies does not blight me. Lank limbs and haggard cheeks do not delight me. I do not care for all that's green by any means. I do not long for all one sees that's Japanese. I am not fond of uttering platitudes and stained glass attitudes. In short, my medievalism's affectation Born of a morbid love of admiration. Oh, hello, you handsome thing, you. <laughs> if your interest want to shine in the high aesthetic line as a man of culture, where oh, you must get up all the terms of the transcendental terms and plant them everywhere. You must lie upon the daisies and discourse the novel phrases of your complicated state of mind. The meaning doesn't matter if it's only idle chatter of a transcendental kind. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if this young man expresses himself in terms too deep for me, then what a very singularly deep young man this deep young man must be. Sentimental passion of a vegetable fashion must excite your languid spleen. Ooh, an attachment a la Plato for a bashful young potato or a nod to French French bean. Though the Philistines may jostle, you will rank as an apostle in the high aesthetic band. If you walk down Piccadilly with a poppy or a lily in your medieval hand, and everyone will say as you walk your flowery way. He's content with a vegetable love which would certainly not suit me. Why, what a most particularly pure young man this pure young man must be. <sighs> oh, patience, dear patience, come hither, come hither. For you are not hollow, are you? No, thanks. I have dined. But I beg your pardon. I interrupt you. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Life is full of interruptions. The yearning soul writhing underneath. Oh, but my heart is a weary. I am a cursed thing. Don't go. Really, I'm very sorry. Tell me, girl, do you ever yearn? I earn my living. No, no, no. Do you know what it is to be heart hungry? Do you know what it is to seek oceans and find puddles? Oh, that is my case, so I am a cursed thing. Don't go. If you please. I don't understand you. It frightens me. Oh, don't be frightened. It's own poetry. Well, if that's poetry, I don't like poetry. <gasps> don't you? Can I trust her? <laughs> Patience. You don't like poetry. Well, between you and me, I don't like poetry. It's hollow, unsubstantial, unsatisfactory. Oh, patience, come here, come here. I have long loved you. Let me tell you a secret. I am not as bilious as I look. If you are fond of the touch and go jocularity, this is the shop for it. Sir, I must speak plainly. In the matter of love, I am untaught. I have never loved but my great aunt. But under any circumstances, I couldn't possibly love you. Oh, you think not? I'm quite sure of it, quite sure. Quite. Oh, very good. Life is once forth and blank. I don't care what happens to me. <laughs> I'm very popular among the other young ladies. <laughs> I only ask that you leave me and never renew the subject. Certainly. Broken-hearted and desolate, I go. Oh, to be wafted away from this black academa of sorrow, where the dust of an earthy today becomes the earth of a dusty tomorrow. <laughs> it's a little thing of my own. I call it hot foam. I shall not publish it. Farewell, patience. P 
Patience, farewell. I, I'm leaving now. P P Patience, you're supposed to come after me or something. What is wrong with this woman? <gasps> what on earth does it all mean? Why does he love me? Why does he expect me to love him? He's not a relation. It frightens me. Why, Patience, what is the matter? Oh, Lady Angela, tell me two things. Firstly, what on earth is this love that upsets everybody? And secondly, how is it to be distinguished from insanity? Oh, poor blind child. Oh, forgive her, Eros. Why, love is the one unselfish emotion in this whirlpool of grasping greed. Love, it is the embodiment of purity, the abstraction of refinement. I suppose. I don't know. Tell me all about it. <laughs> Long years ago, fourteen maybe, when but a tiny baby before, another baby played with me. Pretty 
pretty maiden, pretty tell me true. Paper and doleful, willow, willow, way. Have you e'er a lover dangling after you? Hey, willow, way, oh, I would fain discover if you had a lover. Hey, willow, way. Gentle sir, my heart is frolicsome and free. Hey, but he's doleful, willow, willow, wally. Nobody I care for comes a-courting me. Hey, willow, wally, oh. Nobody I care for comes a-courting therefore. Pretty maiden, will you marry me? Hey, but I'm hopeful, willow, willow, wally. I may say it once, I'm a man of property. Hey, willow, willow, oh. money, I despise it. Many people prize it. Hey, willow, willow. Gentle sir, I'll go to marry I design. Hey, but he's hopeful, willow, willow, waving. As yet I do not know you, and so I must decline. Hey, willow, willow, to other maidens go you, as yet I do not know you. you don't recognize me? Recognize you? No, indeed I don't. Have you forgotten the friend of your youth? Your Archibald? Your little playfellow? Oh, Kronos, Kronos, this is too bad of you. Archibald? Is it possible? Oh, why, let me look. It is! It is! Oh, it must be! <laughs> We should never meet again. And how you've grown! Yes, Patience, I am much taller and stouter than I was. And how you've improved! Yes, Patience, I am very beautiful. Oh, but surely that doesn't make you unhappy. Yes, gifted with a beauty which probably has not its rival on earth, I am completely and utterly miserable. And you too are a poet? Yes, I am the apostle of simplicity. I am called Archibald the All Right, for I am infallible. And is it possible that you condescend to love such a girl as I? Yes, Patience, is it not strange? I have loved you the Florentine 14th century frenzy for a full 50 years. <laughs> to know what love is. It has been revealed to me. It is Archibald Grossmitter. Yes, Patience, it is. We shall never, never part. We shall live and die together. I swear it. We both swear it. But oh, horror. What's the matter? Why, you are perfection, a source of endless ecstasy to all who know you. I know I am. Well. <laughs> but bless my heart, then there can be nothing unselfish in loving you. Oh, if you were only a thought less beautiful than you are. Well, that I were, but candor compels me to admit I am not. Our duty is clear. We must part, and forever. Oh, misery. And yet, I cannot question the propriety of your decision. Farewell, Patience. Farewell, Archibald. Oh, but stay! Yes, Patience? Although it is impossible for me to love you, as you are perfection, there's nothing to prevent your loving me. I am plain, homely, and unattractive. Why, yes, that's true. <laughs> oh, well, the love of such a man 
one as you for a girl such as I must be unselfish. Unselfishness itself. Though to marry you would very selfish be. Hey, but I'm told for willow, willow, way. You may all the same continue loving me. Hey, willow, way, yo. All the world ignoring, all the one adoring. Do not 
that steal to pity eloquent appeal. Such conduct British soldiers feel. Sigh, sigh, all sigh. <sighs> to foam in steel, we really see a British soldier bend the knee. It's a natural timidity. Circuits for the raffle should be purchased with avidity. But if you have a dollar and a husband, you may gain such a judge of blue and white and other kinds of pottery, from early oriental down to modern terracotta. Put in half a dollar, you may draw him in the lottery. Such an opportunity may not occur again. Such a judge of blue and white and other kinds of pottery, from early oriental down to modern terracotta. Put in half a dollar, you may draw him in the lottery. Such an opportunity may not occur. And are you going a ticket for to buy? Most certainly I am. Why shouldn't I? Oh, fortune, this is hard. Blindfold your eyes. Two minutes will decide who wins the prize.
Jan. and Reginald, and sworn allegiance to his rival, and all forsooth because he glanced with passing favor on a puling milkmaid. Fools! Of that fancy he will soon weary, and then I, who alone am faithful to him, shall reap my reward. But do not dally too long, Reginald. 
For my charms are ripe, Reginald. And already they are decaying. Better secure me ere I have gone too far. For thee in my heart, what have I for these poor mad maidens but an unvalued pity? Alas, they shall die with a love for me, and I shall die with a love for thee. Please, will you read to us, sir? Yes, child, what shall I read? One of your own poems. <laughs> One of my own poems? <laughs> I shouldn't. They will not cure thee of thy love. Oh, but Mr. Bunborn used to read us a poem of his own every day. And, to do him justice, he read them extremely well. Oh, did he so? Mm -hmm. Well, here's a decollect. A simple thing. A very daisy. A babe might understand it. To appreciate it, it is not necessary to think anything at all. Let us think of nothing at all. Okay. Gentle Jane was good as gold. She always did as she was told. She never spoke when her mouth was full or caught blue bottles their legs to pull, or spilt plum jam on her nice new frock, or put white mice in the eight-day clock, or vivisected her last new dog, or fostered a passion for alcohol. And when she grew up, she was given in marriage to a first-class earl who keeps his carriage. Now, I believe that there is not one word in that decollet which is calculated to bring the blush of shame to the cheek of modesty. Not one. It is purity itself. Hmm. Here's another. Teasing Tom was a very bad boy. A great big squirt was his favorite toy. And sewed up his Sunday suits and put live shrimp in his father's boots. He punched his poor little sister's head and cayenne peppered their four post beds. He plastered their hair with cobbler's wax and dropped hot half pennies down their backs. The consequence was that he was lost totally and married a girl in the core de Bali. Oh, mark you how grandly, how relentlessly, the damning catalog of crime strode on to retribution, like a poised hawk came swooping upon the wrongdoer. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, oh, oh sir. You are indeed a true poet, for you have touched our hearts and they go out to you. This is simply coin. Ladies, this is Saturday, and you've been following me about since Monday. Mm -hmm. I, sh I shall like the usual half holiday, and I shall take it as a personal favor if you would allow me to close early today. Oh, sir, do not send us from you. Poor, poor girls. It is best to speak plainly. I know that I am loved by you all, but I cannot return that love, for my heart is fixed elsewhere. You must go. <laughs> At last, they're gone. What is this mysterious fascination I seem to exercise upon all those who I come across? Oh, it is a curse of my fatal beauty. I'm sick of conquest. 
patience. Oh, I have escaped with difficulty from my Reginald. I just wanted to see you so much that I might ask if you still love me as fondly as ever. Love you? The devotion of a lifetime. Oh! You do love me, don't you? Madly, hopelessly, despair. <laughs> that's right. I can never be yours, but that's right. And you love this fun thorn? With a heart whole ecstasy that withers and scorches and burns and stings. It is my duty. Admirable girl, but you are not happy with him. Oh, oh, but go now. I see dear Reginald approaching. Farewell, Archibald. I cannot tell you how happy this made me to know that you still love me. Ah, uh, if only I dared. Sir! This language to one who was promised to another! Oh, Archibald. Think of me sometimes when my heart is breaking. He is so unkind to me, and you would be so loving. Loving? And that Me. Why? What is the matter, dear Reginald? If you have any sorrow, tell it to me so that I may share it with you. It is my duty. Whom were you talking with just now? With dear Archibald. Oh, with dear Archibald. Upon my honor, this is too much. A great deal too much. Shut up. Crushed again. Oh, I think he is the noblest, purest, and most perfect being I have ever met, but I don't love him. It is true that he is devotedly attached to me, but I don't love him. Whenever he grows affectionate, I scream. <laughs> I dare say. I dare say. Why, uh, how can I love him and love you too? You, you can't love two people at once. <laughs> can't you though? No, you can't. I only wish you could. <laughs> I don't believe you know what love is. Yes, I do. There was a happy time when I didn't, but a bitter experience has taught me. Love is a plaintive song Sung by a suffering maid Telling a tale of wrong Telling of hope betrayed to to be changing not sorry when he said blind to his every moat merry when he is glad merry when he is glad love that no wrong can cure love that is all 
wrong with me ever since that smug-faced idiot came here. Before that, I was admired. I may say loved to mild. Adored. Uh, do let a poet soliloquize. The damsels used to follow me everywhere I went. Now they all follow him. Not all. I am still faithful to you. Yes, and a pretty damsel you are. No, not pretty. Massive. Cheer up. I am still here. I will always be faithful to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I know it is. It's his unconfounded mildness. The ladies think I'm too highly spiced, if you will. <laughs> and no doubt I am highly spiced. Not for my taste. No, but I am for theirs. <sighs> but I will show the world that I can be just as mild as he. If they want insipidity, they shall have it. I shall meet this man on his own ground and beat him on it. You shall. And I will help you. You will? Oh, thank you, Jane. There's a good deal of good in you after all. So go to him and say to him with compliment ironical. Sing hey to you, good day to you, and that's what I shall say. Your style is much too sanctified, your cut is too canonical. Sing ha ha to you, and that's what I shall say. I was the beau ideal of a morbid young ascetical. To doubt my inspiration was regarded as heretical until you cut me up with your placidity in medical. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing hey to you, good day to you, sing to you, ha ha to you, sing ba. Who do you and that's what you should say? Sing hey to you, good day to you, sing ba to you, ha ha to you, sing ba to you, and that's what you should say. Ba boo, ba boo, and that's what you should say. Ba ba. have of getting the attention of these young ladies is to become as aesthetic as they are. I don't know why, but I have a feeling this 
is not quite right. I don't like it. I, I do it, but I, I don't know what it means. I, I do it, but I don't like it. My good friend, it is not about whether we like it, but whether they do. I believe that this is efficient enough from a distance. Can't help feeling we're a little stiff at it. It would be extremely awkward if we were to be struck so. I do not believe will we be struck so. Oh, here they come. Tension! <laughs> oh. Sephir, see, see. The immortal fire has descended upon them. They are of the inner brotherhood, perceptively intense and consummately utter. How potichel, how raw angelic. <laughs> oh, art, we thank thee for this boon. I'm afraid we're not quite right. Not supremely, perhaps. But oh, so all, uh, but. Oh, Sophia, are they not quite too odd? Uh, they are jolly utter. I wonder what the inner brotherhood usually recommend for crap. Ladies, we will not deceive you. We are doing this at some degree of personal inconvenience with the thought of expressing the extremity of our devotion to you. We will not deny that we are much moved by this proof of attachment. Yes, your conversions to the principle of aesthetic art in its highest development have pleased us greatly. And Mr. Grosvenor shall remain obdurate. Which we have every reason to believe he shall. I wish they'd make haste. We are not prepared to say that our yearning hearts will not go out to you. By sections of three, rapture! Oh. It is extremely good. For beginners, it's admirable. The only question is, who will take who? The Duke will choose as a matter of, co uh, as a matter of course. Well, I couldn't think of it. You're too good. Nothing of the kind. You are a great matrimonial fish. And it is only fair that each of these ladies should have the chance of cooking you. It's quite simple. Observe. Suppose you take Sapphire, I take Angela, Major takes nobody. Suppose you choose Sapphire, I, Major takes Angela, and I take nobody. Suppose you choose Sapphire, I take Angela, and nobody, Major takes nobody. Clear as day. If Sophia I choose to marry, I shall be fixed up for life. Then the Colonel need not tarry, Angela will be his wife. In that case, a precedent in single life will live. Debate internal if for neither I decide. Sophie then will take the colonel and she be the major's bride. In that case, unprecedented single, I must live and die. I will have to be contented with their heartfelt sympathy. He will have to be contented with a heartfelt sympathy.
Ah, it is good to be alone. It is very good to gaze upon those features which all others seem to gaze upon at their own goodwill. Ah, I am a very narcissist. It's no use. Ever since Grosvenor came here, insipidity has been at a premium. Ah, uh, there he is now. Ah, Bunthorn, come here. Look. Very graceful, isn't it? Oh, allow me, I haven't seen it. Hmm. Oh, 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 very graceful indeed. Oh, oh, good gracious. Not that, this. Oh, surely you don't mean that. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm in no mood for trifling. And what's amiss? Ever since you came here, you have entirely monopolized the attentions of the young ladies. I do not like it, sir. My dear sir, how can I help that? Oh, sir, until you came, I was a dog. Exactly. Ever since I came here, that's my grievance. I cut everybody out. Oh, however popular it may be with the world at large, your personal appearance is highly objectable to me. It is? Oh, thank you, thank you. However can I repay you? By making a complete change at once. <laughs> Your conversation must be perfectly henceforth matter of fact. Mm, no. Pardon me, but that is impossible. Huh. Take care. When I am thwarted, I am very terrible. I can't help it, sir. I'm a man with a mission, and that mission must be fulfilled. I don't think you appreciate the consequences of thwarting me. I don't care what they are. <laughs> Suppose, and I won't say so I'll go so far to do it, but suppose for a moment that I curse you. Ah! <laughs> Very well. Take care. <clears throat> but surely you would never do it. Oh, I don't know. It would be an extreme measure, of course. <laughs> but still. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. I'm sure you would not. Oh, Mr. Bunthorn. Reflect! Reflect! You had a mother once? Never. You had an aunt? Oh, I see that you had. And by the memory of that aunt, I implore you, Paul's heir, Mr. Bunthorn, reflect! Reflect! Oh, I shall not allow myself to be unmanned. It is useless. Consent at once, or may a nephew's curse be upon you. Oh! Are you absolutely resolved? Absolutely. Hmm. Will nothing shake you? Nothing! I am adamant! Very good. Then I yield. Ha! You swear it? I do, cheerfully. I've long waited for a pretext such as the one you suggest. It has come at last, and I do it on compulsion. <laughs> Victory! I triumph! When I go out of door, of damsels a score, all sighing and burning and clinging and yearning will follow me as before. I shall with conscious taste distinguish gem from paste, and high diddle diddle rank as an idol if I pronounce it chaste. A most intense young man, a soulful art young man, an ultra poetical, super ascetical, out of the way young man. Concede me if you can, an everyday young man. A commonplace type with a stick and a pipe and a haggard black and tan Who fix suburban hops, more fun than Monday pops Who's fun of his dinner and doesn't get thinner on bottled beer and chops A commonplace young man, a matter of fact young man A steady, stolidy, jolly break holiday, every day young man a pallid and thin young man, a haggard and lank young man, a greenery gallery crawls from a gallery foot in the grave young man, a Sewell and Cross young man, a Howell and James young man, a pushing young particle, what's the next article, Waterloo House young man, to see me if you can, a matter of fact young man, then now the better go out of the way young man. Go out the way, young man. Receive me if you can, a melody cracked young man, then not a poetical, how is medical out of your way, young man? It's all right. 
I have committed my last act of ill nature and henceforth become a new character. Oh, patience, patience. I am a changed man. Hitherto I have been gloomy, moody, fitful, uncertain in temperament and selfish in disposition. You have indeed. Oh, but that is all changed. I am reformed. I have modeled myself upon Mr. Grosvenor. I am now mildly cheerful. Oh, Reginald, is all this true? Oh, quite true. Observe how amiable I am. <sighs> but Reginald, how long will this last? Oh, okay. With the occasional interval for rest and refreshment, as long as I do. I do it on compulsion. That's terrible! Go! I can never set eyes on you again! But oh, joy! What's the matter? Is it quite certain that you will forever be a commonplace young man? Always. I've sworn it. Oh, then there's nothing to prevent my loving you with all the fervor at my command! That's true! <laughs> my Archibald! My patience! Uh, I'll crush the game! Cheer up. I am still here. <laughs> I have never left you, and I never will. Thank you, Jane. After all, you are a fine figure of a woman. My Reginald. My Jane. <laughs> Ladies, the Duke is at determined to select a bride. <laughs> I have a gift to bestow to you. Approach, such as you are truly lovely. <laughs> In physical appearance, you all have traits which would make a woman very happy. But, in common fairness, I must choose the one amongst you who is most distinctly plain. <laughs> After much debate 
internal eye on Lady Jane decide. Sauce now may take the Colonel and he be the Major's bride. In that case, unprecedented single, I must live and die. I shall have to be contented with the tulip or the lie. He will have to be contented with the tulip or the lie. I must live and die. I shall have to be contented with.